Um, hi everyone, thank you for the opportunity to present today. Um, I'll be talking about my PhD research, which is looking at uh, changes in cognition over time in MS. I was hoping to actually be able to share the results of a study with you all today, but unfortunately we've had some delays processing um, the biological samples that we collected as part of that study, so we haven't yet been able to analyse that data. Um, so instead, I'm going to talk a bit about why we decided to do the study, uh, what we did, and what we expect that we might find when we do get to analysing the information that we've collected. Okay, so firstly, what is cognition? Well, really, this is a word that summarises the collection of mental processes that are involved in thinking, learning and remembering. Um, for example, in the context of a work environment, cognition could involve things like paying attention in a meeting to what your manager is saying to you and your colleagues, or it might be how quickly you can process information in your mind to get your work tasks done, or it could be using problem solving to figure out how you're going to manage your workload for the day so that you can get everything done. And it could also be remembering what tasks you did yesterday and maybe you don't need to do again today. And these processes are important, uh, not just for work, but because we rely on them to function efficiently and effectively in our everyday lives too. Whoops. So we know that between 40 and 65% of people living with MS experience difficulties with their cognition. In the clinic and in research, this is often broadly referred to as cognitive dysfunction to describe varying levels of cognitive difficulties. These difficulties can contribute to a reduced health-related quality of life, largely because they can just make everyday life more difficult. So experiencing cognitive difficulties could, for example, mean that a person needs to spend more energy focusing in order to follow what someone's saying during a conversation, or they may have to write lots of things down so that they can remember them. And the experience of cognitive difficulties can be measured in two main ways, either by questionnaires which ask about a person's experience of these difficulties, or by objective cognitive tests, which are often used in the clinic and in research studies. And some research has shown that for some people living with MS, the experience of cognitive dysfunction can be linked with damage to nerve cells and to MS progression. However, people living with MS can have very different experiences of cognitive difficulties and we don't yet have a really clear picture of the way that different processes that happen within the body in MS can contribute to these difficulties. We do know that a particular pathway in the body, known as the canurinine pathway of tryptophan metabolism, which produces key metabolites or substances that are necessary for essential processes, including brain and immune functioning, has been shown to have imbalances in MS. And what this means is that instead of producing a variety of metabolites in balance, in MS, can you rename pathway metabolites that can contribute to nerve cell damage uh, when they are present in larger concentrations are being made at the expense of those that can help to protect and repair nerve cells. So it makes sense that this pathway might be involved in some way in the experience of cognitive difficulties in MS. And some earlier work um, out of our lab, which was undertaken in 2016 to 2017 by um, one of my supervisors, Dr. Cynthia Honan and colleagues, was investigating this idea. And this study found that canurinine pathway metabolites in blood samples of people living with MS were linked with cognitive functioning. 
and these links were different when compared to people without MS. So for this most recent study, we wanted to build on those findings to try and gain a better understanding of these links because it is possible that these links could be an important piece of the puzzle to help with a better understanding and management of cognitive difficulties for people living with MS. Uh, so the aims of this most recent study were to see if we would find the same links between the cuneurinating pathway and cognitive difficulties several years later and also to investigate if these links change in some way over time. So what did we do for the study? Well, firstly, um, we invited uh, people sorry, living with MS who had participated in the earlier study to participate in a follow-up study because collecting information from the same participants would mean we could look at the change in their cuneurinine metabolites and cognitive function over a four to five year period. And we had a total of 27 people living with MS choose to participate in the follow-up. Um, and I do just want to mention here that we didn't follow up people without MS from the earlier study because we had found in that earlier study that there were unique links between the cuneurinine pathway and cognition in people living with MS and these unique links are what we wanted to explore further. So recruited participants were asked a series of questions to reconfirm their eligibility and then completed several uh, self-report questionnaires, both on cognition as well as other functional outcomes, including fatigue and participation in daily activities. Then within seven days of completing the questionnaires, participants attended a session at the local university campus to complete a series of cognitive tests and provided a blood sample immediately following cognitive testing for later analysis of the cuneurinine pathway metabolites. So once the blood samples are finished being processed from the study and we have the cuneurinine metabolite information for all the participants, We'll use scores on a key cognitive test from the earlier study to split participants into two groups based on whether they showed considerable cognitive difficulties at this first time point or not. And we will then use statistical modelling to allow us to examine the change over time between these two groups in cognitive test scores, other functional outcomes like fatigue and participation in daily activities, and the different cuneurinine pathway metabolites. So this study is quite exploratory because there's limited research looking at the links between the cuneurinine pathway and cognition, but what we expect to find is that difficulties with cognition and other functional outcomes will be linked with imbalances in cuneurinine pathway metabolites, as was the case in the earlier study. And we also expect that the group of participants with considerable cognitive difficulties in the earlier study will have increased imbalances in cuneurinine pathway metabolites after this four to five year period and will not perform as well on the cognitive tests and other functional outcomes as the group who did not have considerable cognitive difficulties at baseline. So we will wait to see what the analysis shows and what insights it might give us about whether and how the cuneurinine pathway is related to changes in cognition over time in MS. And then the next step after that is going to be exploring in another study how the gut bacteria and the gut brain connection may affect the cuneurinine pathway and cognitive functioning in MS including whether probiotics might have some therapeutic role in the management of cognitive difficulties in relapsing and remitting MS. 
Um, if what I've talked about today interests you, there are plenty of opportunities for consumer involvement, um, including plain language review of study results for distribution and of participant documents for the upcoming study on the gut-brain connection, uh, as well as participation in the upcoming study. So please come and see me um, at the trade tables today, or if you see me around at lunch or afternoon, Tea, please come and have a chat. Um, I would like to thank all the participants for generously volunteering their time for the study, uh, as well as um, Dr. Cynthia Honan and the rest of my supervisory team and the wider project team for their input. Um, thanks also to Clifford Craig Foundation, MS Australia, and the Australian Government Research Training Program for funding. And thanks to all the wonderful contributors and funders for today's event. And thanks to all of you for your attention.